Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now quickly revise our knowledge on the measuring instruments. Now when we talk about measuring instrument, the first thing that we will talk about is a galvanometer. A galvanometer is an instrument that detects small current passing through it. Now here I would like you to make a note of this that a lot of students feel that a galvanometer and an emitter are the same thing but they are not. Emitter measures current. It tells you whether it is 1 ampere current or 10 amperes current. So it measures current. But galvanometer doesn't measure current. It just detects that current is flowing or not. So it has a it, it shows deflection, it gets deflected the moment current flows through it. So it detects current but it doesn't measure current. However, a galvanometer can be converted into an ammeter to measure current. It can also be converted into a voltmeter to measure voltage. So a galvanometer can be converted into either of these. Now how do you convert a galvanometer into an ammeter? Now an ammeter measures current whereas a voltmeter measures voltage, right? So now to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter, what do we do? We have to, now ammeter measures current. So we want to do a setup where the currents are not the same. So we basically add a small resistance add a low resistance value in parallel so in parallel to the galvanometer we add a small resistance in parallel why do we add it in parallel because in parallel combination the current flowing is different right because if, if they are in the series combination then the same current would flow through the galvanometer as well as these this low resistance right but we do not want that to happen we want more current to pass through this low resistance so that we can measure that current right in order to do that we need low resistance so that low less opposition to the current most of the current will pass through this low resistance this low resistance is often called as a shunt so we say that to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter, we connect a shunt in parallel. So basically, th this is how the circuit would look like. Let's say that this is your galvanometer. So what you do is you connect a low resistance in parallel to the galvanometer. So this low resistance is shunt. Now what happens? Let's say that current I is flowing through the circuit. Now in this case, this is a very low resistance compared to the resistance of the galvanometer. So most of the current would pa pass through this shunt and very small amount of current will actually pass through this galvanometer. So let's say that if Ig passes through galvanometer, then I minus Ig will pass through the shunt. So basically we can say that the potential difference between these two points will be equal to V is equal to I into R that is Ig into G where G is the resistance of the galvanometer. So this will be equal to the potential difference between these two points right. The potential difference between these two points and these two points would be the same. So the potential difference between these two points would be I into R. So I is I minus Ig into R is S where S is the resistance value. So from this you can say S is equal to Ig divided by I minus Ig into G. So this should be the value of the shunt. So if you can add a resistance of this value in parallel to the galvanometer, then the galvanometer would behave like an ammeter. Now let's see what can we do to convert a, a galvanometer into a voltmeter. So for that purpose, we will do exactly the opposite thing. That is, we will take a high resistance because if the resistance is high, then very less amount of current will pass through it, right? So we will take high resistance and in series. Why in series? Because in series, the potential differences are different. Now, because in this case, if we connect them in parallel, then the potential difference across the galvanometer would be the same as the potential difference across the new resistance which we have added and we do not want that to happen so therefore in this case what we do is 
this is our galvanometer we connect a high resistance in series let's say this resistance is r so now what happens so if you look at this circuit now this potential difference is what we are looking at because the potential difference now since this resistance is very high so the measurement will be better as very small amount of current will pass through this circuit since small amount of current will pass therefore there will be less voltage drop and as a result we will be able to calculate the entire potential difference across this so potential difference V will be equal to the current flowing which is IG IG is a very small amount of current that would uh, flow so ig into the total resistance that is g plus r so therefore the value of r is v divided by ig minus g so this should be the value of resistance to convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter so this is how a galvanometer and um, an ammeter and voltmeter works now let's move on to potentiometer. So potentiometer is, you, you can say in simple words that potentiometer is like an ideal voltmeter. So this also measures the potential difference. The only difference is that it does not draw any current from the circuit to measure the potential difference. So potentiometer is used to compare EMFs of cells and it is also used to measure EMF or internal resistance. Now how does it compare EMF? So if you have two cells with EMFs E1 and E2, so using a potentiometer you can see that E1 by E2 is equal to L1 by L2 where L1 and L2 are the balancing lengths of the uh, wire of the potentiometer corresponding to EMFs E1 and L1. That means when the EMF is e E1, then the balancing length is at L1. Similarly, when the EMF is E2, then the balancing length is at L2. So knowing these values, you can very easily compare EMFs of two cells. How do you measure internal resistance? So internal resistance is measured like this. Internal resistance is equal to L1 by L2 minus 1 into S, where S is the resistance of the resistance box e is the e okay l1 and l2 are again the respective balancing lengths this can also be written as r is equal to e by v minus 1 into s where e is the emf of the cell v is the potential difference between the two poles of the cell and S is the resistance of the resistance box. Now I will not get into the detail of the construction and working of potentiometer because we have already discussed them in the physics videos of class 11th. So see this entire video is just a quick revision of uh, your theoretical concepts which are important for your um, entrance examination. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.